Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and here's this week's quick tip for luthiers. So right over my shoulder here, I've got this rather nice slab of um, walnut that I'm going to be using in an upcoming guitar build, and that kind of gave me an idea for this week's quick tip, and that is wood selection for your guitar build. And I'm not talking about tone wood here, so let's not get into that debate yet. I'll probably, I've got some ideas about something to do in the near future. But for now, what I wanted to mention was the importance of making sure that the wood you're going to use in your build is adequately dry and even more importantly, has been allowed to acclimate to the environment where you're going to be building your guitar. And this is kind of a, a tough subject for some folks because a lot of people simply don't have either the space or the time to acclimate the wood before they use it in a build. And I'm in a situation where I give my customers as much opportunity to choose whatever wood they want. Um, I don't limit them to, you know, the alder, mahogany, maple, rosewood, ebony selection. I... I basically tell them the sky's the limit, whatever they want to use in their build. And that may be based on a preconceived notion about tone, or it may have something to do with the way the wood looks, you know, the figure, the grain, that sort of thing. So I try to give my customers as much leeway as they possibly can. As a result, in order for wood to acclimate in an ideal situation, I'd have to have a warehouse filled floor to ceiling with every species of wood imaginable. So I'd have that luxury of being able to pull down whatever I wanted to use in a build. And I just, I simply can't do that. What I can do, however, is I can take a few steps to make sure that the wood that I'm gonna use is going to work well in the build that I'm going to do. And what I have found works well for me is I've got five, I'm fortunate, I have five local lumber suppliers that I can travel around to in about a, eight hour period and I can check their selections of wood to find wood that's gonna work for whatever build I'm gonna do. And these suppliers, what they typically do is they bring in large shipments of wood. The wood is warehoused for a while and it can be anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. Then they put it on the, uh, the showroom or in their, uh, the warehouse where they sell the wood and at that point, it is to some degree acclimated. And another step that I take is I check the moisture content. I have a moisture meter. I can plug it into the wood and figure out what the moisture content for that piece of wood is. And I always shoot for something in the neighborhood of 6 to 10%. Now, it's hard to get below 6%. That's super, super dry. But I definitely try to stay below 10% just to play it safe. And... A lot of times when I'm buying wood for a guitar build, I'll buy more than what I actually need and then stick some of it in my shop and let it acclimate um, for as long as possible before I ever begin to use it. Um, and that's typically something I do with the woods that I use most often for fretboards and necks. Bodies aren't as big of an issue. Um, the real issue is that neck. If, if the wood you're using for your neck moves at any point after the guitar has been built, you could end up with a guitar that isn't playable. So what I try to do is I try to definitely make sure that the wood that I'm going to be using for my necks is uh, reasonably well acclimated. And when I say acclimated, what you typically want to do is you want to find a space near, in or near where you work where you can store the lumber where the temperature is going to remain consistent and the humidity is going to remain consistent. And when you stack the wood, you always want to put some uh, strips of wood uh, between each layer um, so that you can allow air to circulate around the wood as it acclimates. And, you know, ideally, you should let it sit about a year if you can possibly do that. If not, you just want to absolutely make sure that the wood is as dry as you can possibly get it, and then you'll have fewer headaches and issues down the road. Um, because, you know, once the guitar has been made, the, if you've done it correctly, the wood should be sealed to where it's not going to be soaking up a lot of humidity. And that's why you can build a guitar and then ship it across the country to another customer and they not have any problems with it. So... 
Um, that's this week's quick tip. Um, make sure the wood is dry and do your best to try to let it acclimate before you use it when you start to build your guitar. And I think you'll be a lot more happy down the road. So uh, until the next uh, episode, take care and we will see you soon. Yeah.